Amen, amen. God is good. Let's put our hands together and give the Lord praise. Amen. God is good all the time, all the time. God is good. Welcome you here tonight to the prayer closet. I am Pastor Jeff. I'm the pastor of Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church in Siler City. Uh, want to welcome you here tonight. The Word of God makes you and I a promise. Blessed are they that come hungry and thirsty after righteousness. They shall be filled. Amen. What a wonderful day the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Amen. Rejoice, rejoice, rejoice. Amen. There's a little uh, thoughts that's been going through my mind today. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. So we're just honored today to uh, thank the Lord for his blessings. Thank the Lord for all of what he's done and what he's going to do for us. Amen. He is worthy. He is a good God all the time. And all the time, God is good. Amen. We uh, uh, had a great weekend this weekend. We was at, hey there, Miss Judy. Uh, down, traveled down to Newburn. And if you look at the previous post, some of you may uh, be a little curious, those that's not part of our, our ministry here at Pleasant Grove, but went down to, to be ordained in Newburn at Feast Tabernacle Ministries in Newburn. And it's a bilingual Spanish English ministry. The Lord gave me the opportunity to preach, and we uh, was able to preach. We preached a sermon in English and in Spanish, and God uh, really uh, blessed. Amen. When you worship the Lord and you usher in the presence of the Lord through your praise and worship, you'll find that the services goes a lot better, and the services go uh, just. Uh, to please the Lord. If your mind is to focus and to uh, please Him, then you'll find that what the Lord wants you to do will, will just be lined up with Him. Amen. So we're uh, honored to be in the Lord's house uh, today. You say, well, Pastor Jeff, you're in your living room. I said, yes, I'm in my living room, but the, we're the temple of God and the Spirit of God dwells in us. Amen. So here we are. I want to bring some scripture to you today. Uh, we'll open up in prayer and then we'll see how the Lord lets me uh, go. I just want to share a little bit about prayer and then we'll go over our prayer list. Amen. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Our Father in heaven, we thank you for the opportunity to call on your name. We thank you, Lord, for your blessings. We thank you, Lord, for being our God. We ask you, Lord, that you would just give us an ear to hear and a heart to receive and a mind to understand. Lord God, as David said in Psalm 139, search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be any wicked way in me. Lead me in thy way everlasting. We thank you and we praise you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. So I wanted to share something with you here, and it's going to be coming out of the book of Psalms. So let me uh, see where I would like to uh, start with this. And I think it may be... Before I give you the scripture reference, let me go over here and turn and make sure that's where I wanted us to be. Amen. But it's awesome to to be able to, to read God's word and to preach God's word today. Let me see, 35, 13, make sure that's where I want to be. Uh, let's see. Let's... Let's start, today we're going to read in the book of Psalm, uh, chapter 5. The book of Psalm, chapter 5. Amen? Amen? And when we look at this in the book of Psalm, chapter 5, verse 1, this is a psalm of David. He says, Give ear to my words, O Lord. Consider my meditation. Hearken unto the voice of my cry. My King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. For thou art not a God that hath pleasure in wickedness, neither shall, thou ever, shall evil dwell with thee. The foolish shall not stand in thy sight. Thou hatest all workers of iniquity. Thou shalt destroy them that speak leasing, that means lies, and the Lord will abhor the bloody and deceitful man. 
But as for me, I will come into thy house in the multitude of thy mercy, and in thy fear will I worship toward thy holy temple. Lead me, O Lord, in thy righteous righteousness because of mine enemies. Make thy way straight before my face. Now, anytime you read the book of Psalms, the psalmist is always uh, praying for a closer walk and for guidance of the Lord. And here the psalmist David is talking about, uh, he's going to pray. And, you know, I like the story of Daniel that said he prayed three times a day, every morning, noon, and night. Amen. That as we think about this, God wants us to pray. You know, prayer is communication between us and the Lord. Hey there, Miss Millie. Uh, good to see you tonight. So, when the psalmist David is talking about praying, that's getting our hearts ready to worship and to praise him. The time to pray is not right before you come to church. Now, let me fix this. Yes, you pray before you come to church, but that's not the only time you pray. You pray Monday. You pray Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Every day of the week, you should call upon the name of the Lord. You know, when you pray, it is communication between you and the Lord. And David says, uh, hear my voice when I cry, my King and my God, for unto thee will I pray. You know, what we uh, find ourselves sometimes doing when we pray is always asking for something instead of just talking to God. You know, when you call a friend just to see how they're doing, uh, if the only time you call someone is to say, can I have this? Can I have that? Then maybe sometimes that friend's going to stop answering the phone. <laughs> Amen. Because they, they may say, well, every only time they call me is when they want something. And technically, every time we pray, it's because we want something. Uh, what does that mean? We want a closer walk with the Lord. Amen. Uh, we, that should be our priority want between us and the Lord that I want more of the Lord. And there's times we pray whenever, uh, we know someone is sick, when someone is lost, when someone is grieving, when someone is, uh, hurting, uh, uh, as in pain. And also when someone's feelings get hurt, we have to pray. Amen. Uh, sometimes people's feelings get hurt and, we think, well, that was a silly reason for their feelings to get hurt. However, sometimes all of us get our feelings hurt and we want somebody to listen to us with empathy. And I believe that as, as the Lord would have you and I as believers in Christ to listen to others with empathy. That means with a caring ear, uh, uh, caring how they feel and as a, as a pastor, the Lord, I'm blessed that the Lord gave me that heart that I care how people feel. And you'll find when you show that you care how people feel, that the Lord will bless you and the Lord will give you instruction on how to be a blessing to other people. Amen. But David, here David talking about prayer. Now we're getting ready to do a prayer list. But anytime you pray, there's so much scripture that deals with prayer uh today uh that the key part of prayer is that there's different times to pray the number one time to pray is when you're lost and you need to be saved amen that the first time i ever pray that the lord will hear me is when i pray the bible teaches in psalm 66 18 let me turn there and i think i quote this uh several times but i want to read it uh today it says if i regard iniquity in my heart the lord will not hear me amen so that means if i have sin in my heart the lord's not going to hear my prayer amen so there's times that i the first time i pray is for forgiveness for the lord to cleanse my heart amen now sometimes you you as a as a christian throughout the day you'll find lord forgive me you know help me lord Help me grow. Draw me closer to you. And if you don't do that, maybe I, I should encourage you to practice it. I, I do that every day. You know, as, I, as I'm walking through the, at work, I find myself 
Lord, forgive me. Just I want to be closer. Uh, you know, sometimes you sin and don't even know you sin. Amen. Uh, and sometimes you do know you sin. But uh, you, you pray, so Lord, forgive me. Draw me closer to you. I want more of you, Lord. Let your presence uh, be in my heart. Uh, let your presence be here in me. In my, in my, <laughs> and I had to jump to Spanish. I see my, my mother-in-law's here worshiping the Lord with me. Amen. But so I want to pray that the Lord come in here. And I prayed and he's coming into my heart. Amen. And so it's to pray for that. And then the next time to pray is to draw closer, to worship him and to honor him and to glorify the Lord. Amen. To raise your hands, to honor him in all that you say and do. Amen. The Lord, I want to honor you. I want to praise you. Amen. There's time that you pray when people are sick. Amen. There's some that you get sick and you pray for them. Some that are uh, that need protection and you pray for protection. Now, one thing I'd like to do Sunday is, uh, um, unless the Lord changes my pathway, is that I'm going to call all the young people uh, to the front and I'm going to have the whole church uh, come and circle our young people to pray over them. Amen. As uh, I just felt this in my spirit um, uh, starting this week that we need to pray for our whole church, but we need to pray for our young people. Amen. And to pray for those young people uh, is to pray for one, them have a relationship with Christ. Uh, another is that they're protected as they grow up, as they're beginning to hear things of this world, that they'll hear the word of God and they'll start hearing the word of God at our church and they'll hear the word of God at home. Amen. It's going to be so important. I believe it's going to be a special time. And, you know, maybe our young people may not even understand the blessing that we'll pray over them and speak over them. However, there's going to be a difference in this. We have to pray for that wall of protection for our young people. Amen. And there's praying for sick. There's praying for healing. There's praying for us to get closer to the Lord. There's praying for our church, uh, our church family to have love. And there's praying for our church family to grow closer to the Lord. Amen. So there's all avenues to pray. David said, I'm going to pray. He says, uh, let me go back over here to my scripture. I looked down at Psalm 66. I said, I'm supposed to be in Psalm 5. But in verse 3 again, it says, My voice shall thou hear in the morning, O Lord. He said, Lord, I'm going to talk to you in the morning. We should talk to the Lord the first thing we do when we get up. Amen. As you're waking up, it should be, thank you, Lord. Amen. As we get ready to go to bed at night, we should end our day with giving the Lord thanks and praise for keeping us safe through the day. And I don't want to say you just pray one time through the day. Amen. You should pray throughout the day. Amen. So, amen, Greg. Good to see you. So we should be praying throughout the day, not just uh, in the morning when we wake up and in the evening before we go to bed. But why should we pray in the morning when we wake up? We need guidance for that day. We need the blessings of the Holy Spirit to guide us that day that we, you know, the Lord knows the circumstances you'll face that day before you face them. The Lord knows your weaknesses. He'll know, he knows that uh, uh, you may not even know your weaknesses all the time. And so to know and pray for the Lord to give you strength to make it through that day, to, get, uh, to avoid temptation, you need to pray, amen, and give him the praise for guiding you through the day. And of course, throughout the day you should pray. But why should you pray at night? When you go to bed, amen? There's many people, they lay their head down and they go to sleep and they never wake up, amen? Now, my prayers over our church is none of that ever happens to us. Uh, when it's time for me to go into the go to the Lord, uh, when this life is over, I want to pass in my sleep, amen? Uh, as, But if I do pass in my sleep, I want to make sure that I'm ready, Amen? That my heart is clear. There's nothing through that day that uh, that has uh, hindered my relationship with the Lord. And not only that, if I uh, if I do wake the next morning, I want the Lord to give me a good night's rest, and I want the Lord to give me dreams. 
and give me guidance in my dreams. Amen. And show me how to be more what he wants me to be. Amen. So in the morning and in the evening are definitely the times you should pray. But throughout the day, if you're seeking a closer walk with the Lord, you should find yourself giving the Lord a wave offering to say, thank you, Lord. Lord, I, I, I need your help. I, I, I give. And now look, there's a time that you raise your hands to push like this. And there's time that you worship holding your hands like that. And when you praise, you're, you're, you're giving the Lord, I, I give you the praise. Amen. And when you hold your hands down here, so it's like I want to receive more of you. Amen. So I, I want more of you. I give you the praise, the honor, and the glory. Amen. So God is an awesome God and he's worthy to be praised. Amen. We bless his name above all names. That in the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue confess. Amen. That Jesus Christ is Lord. So Sunday, we're going to pray. It's also something I'd like us to uh, start doing. Uh, in the, and I opened up with this thought that had come to mind about let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. I want you to start having an opportunity to, to share your testimony at church. Amen. And there'll, there'll be a, a whole teach. Uh oh, there'll be a whole teaching and a preaching on why we should testify and why we should give the Lord our praise. Amen. But letting the redeemed of the Lord say so is uh, what scripture comes to mind right off is talking about. If you'll be ashamed of me before men, I'll be ashamed of you before my Father in heaven. Amen. We shouldn't want, we shouldn't be ashamed of the Lord. And and there's times that you say, well, I just can't speak in public. And and God knows what our abilities and and our inabilities are. Amen. But God will take our weakness and make us strong. What you think you can do uh, fairly well, you'll find yourself uh, if you're humble. God will make those things better. But if you're arrogant, God will make those things decrease. Amen. But if we sit here and say, Lord, I'm, I'm weak in, in the, the part of, or I feel that I'm weak in the part of public speaking. You know, I share this with you church all the time that I've, I've never been a good public speaker. Amen. I don't have an eloquent uh, vocabulary. My, my voice may not sound like it's very pleasant to listen to. I could try to change my voice and have a deeper tone. Maybe that would be better. Amen. But, but that's just not me. My voice is the voice that I have. I don't have the radio announcer voice, but I do have the spirit of the Lord and, and you do too. Amen. So what we do together is we worship the Lord the best we can. Amen. As we praise the Lord and worship the Lord together, we usher in the presence of the Lord. Amen. What is the presence of the Lord is, is none other than his precious Holy Spirit. Amen. The Spirit of the Lord. We want him always welcome. Where Wherever the Spirit of the Lord is, that's where the Lord is. Amen. So we'll find ourselves doing that uh, more often. Amen. Uh, now, our church... Look, we had a great time at Pastor Jose's, but I tell you what is that I really missed being there in front of all of, of all my people there at Pleasant Grove. Amen. I miss missed you all. I missed worshiping with you because I wanted to I wanted to see you praise and worship. I wanted to see your response uh, to the message, and I wanted you to feel uh, something from the message. As as uh, I know, I could feel it. The people that was there. At, Pleasant, uh, excuse me, at Feast Tabernacle, they could, uh, they were feeling the presence of the Lord, and but I just wanted to be there with with my church, Amen. That uh, uh, that I, I really love our church. Let me say it like that. But let's go to the Lord in prayer. There's uh, still many that we have to lift up in prayer, Amen. And so there's. As we gave an illustration of the reasons we should pray, amen, is that there's a time that we have to see that, let me get adjusted here, there's a time that we uh, want to keep things right in the right frame of mind 
and in the right uh, at our right church. I want our church to grow. I don't want it to decrease. Amen. Now, keep in mind as we prepare to pray. I know Miss Sharon mentioned uh, wanting to have some type of cantata that we may go and visit uh, a rest home or retirement home there in Siler City uh, before Easter or around that time frame. So keep that in your mind as uh, if nothing else, if we can't practice some great big fancy uh, new songs, let us work on a, a few songs that, and check on to our, our local retirement or re care facility there in Siler City so we can go visit and share the Lord Jesus Christ. When the weather gets prettier, uh, I like, uh, and I'll talk to our elders there, a time that we can start setting up a visitation. And I'm not going to say every weekend, but we want to choose, uh, start off at least one weekend and sort of get a, get learning how to go and invite people to church. And as we invite people to church, we'll find uh, that we've got to show a friendly atmosphere. We've been growing in the spirit there at uh, Pleasant Grove for, for a few months. And we're ready to show what the Lord has done in our, in our local church there. And to invite our people from our neighborhood, uh, invite them to come in. But, uh, but there's times that you visit for inviting people to church and time you visit to be a soul winning visit. Amen. You're out to look for the lost, seek the lost and to lead them to the Lord. And, uh, so there, we want to go through teaching uh, so that you know how to be a witness and how to lead people to the Lord. Make sure you know how to do that. Amen. Let's go over our prayer list. Uh, I was able to see a, a good picture on Facebook this week of, of Tori. Amen. She had a beautiful picture and uh, that was uh, looking good. They was talking about her hair starting to grow back. I'm looking forward to to meeting her in person, but I want to go over our, our beat cancer list. And so as we go over our beat cancer list, who we got, there's Miss Sharon, is that we go over our beat cancer list. We got uh, Heidi Elliott, Tori, Patsy, Roger, Joy Denny, Joy Witt, Rhonda, Gabby, Donna Ellis, Willie, Daniel Gaden, Eugene, uh, Donna Crawford's father. And, uh, now, some of these have already been healed of cancer, and but we pray for them to maintain. And, and what, you know, we pray for people to be healthy and whole before they ever get sick. So we pray them through their sickness, but we pray first before you ever get sick that you don't face any of these diseases. But if you do face these diseases, we pray for healing. After you're healed, we pray for God keeping you safe. I hope you understand that. That's just the way. Uh, so I keep them on the beat cancer list to keep beating it. Amen. In Jesus name. My son's teachers. I got them right here beside us. Miss Boone uh, or Miss Dye, Miss Coon, Miss Mitchell, Miss Toodle or Miss Toodle, Mr. Nazaro, Miss Gunther. And he's got a Spanish teacher. Her first name is Elizabeth. I don't have her last name written down. Amen. So let's go over our. Regular list. Uh, now, I still want you to make your own family list. Amen? So let, I want to call out these names. As I'm calling out my names, you can start writing yours down. If you have some special requests, pop them up. Uh, write them up there so I can announce those today. But Irene, Jeffrey, my dad, Kenny, Donna, uh, Brian, Christine Coles, James and Susie, Sotera, my mother-in-law, Sotera, Teresa, Silvano, Dolores, Gonzalo, Eugenio, Maria, Gregorio, Anna, Antonio, Norma, Rose, Corina, my cousins, Mitzi and Ron, Wendy, Judy Williams, Uncle George, Uncle Michael and Janice, Carmel Mann, Sean, Angie, Crystal, Michael, James, Ashley, my nieces and nephews, my cousins, Randy, Dwayne, Michael Jr., Derek, Brandy, and Ryan. Our church, Pleasant Grove Wesleyan Church. Let's give a little wave. Amen, amen. Lord blessing our church. We've got 
Greg and Sharon Smith, Victoria, Kaylee, Jacqueline, and, and Thomas, Taisley, Patsy, Donna Ellis, Willie Jr., Willie, Sylvia, Doris, David, Debbie, Tori, Crystal, Roger, and Bonnie, Millie and Eugene, Jerry and Jr., Shannon, Judy and Randall, J.D. Johnson, Sammy, Annette, Adam, Alex, Ashley, Eli, our worship leaders, our Sunday school teachers, the pastor and his family, Wendy, Kelly, Barbara, Jean, Sierra, Gladys, uh, Sheila, and Sh so, so if you have others at our at our church, uh, and speaking of our prayer list, we've got that prayer list or our our prayer umbrella there at the church. Write a little name and put them on uh, on the list. Let's see. Your sister Ellen. Okay, we'll make sure we get her added to the list. Miss Ellen diagnosed with a blood clot on her liver. Okay, we'll definitely lift up Miss Ellen. Amen. Lord, you know the circumstances in Miss Ellen's life right now. You know her what this is about the blood. At Christ Temple Church of Deliverance, we lift up other churches. Bishop Joe and Zena Henderson. Uh, the church we was just at Sunday, Feast Tabernacle, at Pastor Jose and Yvette Perez. And there's others in his church that needs prayer. So the Lord knows as I preach, as I pray for their the leadership of the church, their families and congregations follow. Amen. Glen Raven First Baptist Church with Pastor Joan Renee, Renee Miles, Midway Wesleyan Church, Pastor Kenneth and, Glor uh, and Crystal Davis. You wouldn't believe this. I started to say Pastor Kenneth and Gloria Copeland. <laughs> I, I haven't said their names in years. Amen. A television evangelist. But I haven't said his name in years. I don't know how that uh, came to mind. Uh, Gethsemane Christian Church, Pastor James Lanish Patrick, uh, Pastor Jonathan Lewis, Reverend Eddie and Martha Smith, Rev. Ron Moore, Reverend Dustin uh I'm sorry, Brother David Barnard, uh, I think is how I, I got his name, Barnard. Uh, and Pastor Michael Miles, amen, lifting up these pastors. We want to, it's so important to lift up uh, the preachers and teachers of God's word. Amen. If, if the devil can keep us from preaching and teaching, then he can prevent other people from hearing the gospel. Amen. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. How can they hear, hear without a preacher? Amen. How can he preach unless he's been sent according to the word of God? As that God wants us to pray for the preachers. Amen. Our military families, uh, Scott and Becky, Presley, Beverly, her mom, Tammy, a friend of hers, uh, Bobby Moore and Soul, David Durning, Savannah, his daughter, David Moore and Peggy, da Dylan Turner, Dave, Dulani, Pete Grunkmeyer, Timmy Smith, Joe Desso, and his wife, Kathy. Friends and co-workers, Cindy Turlington, Will Callaghan, Suarez family, Sherry Davenport, Adam Reed, Tammy C. from work, uh, Pam Brown, uh, Susan, Stephanie, Alicia, Jean Boswell, Joe, uh, Jeremy, Jeff Wilson and Julie, Bill Sanders and Jamie, Ken Jones, Adnan, Justin, Jeff Stevens, Vernon Caps, Teresa Wilson, Phyllis, CJ, Greg Young, Larry and Gabby Hoover, the Hughes family, Guy, Cassandra, Caius, Abby, Marty Martin, John Steele, Rodney, and Charlie. We lift up uh, Daniel, Sharice, and Kelsey. Our government officials, law enforcement, firefighters, emergency personnel and families, and our educators. We lift up each one of these that they, we pray for salvation, healing, and removal of all diseases and protection against any future disease. Cancer, diabetes, heart issues, blood issues, arthritis, depressions, confidence issues, family issues, school issues, work issues, home issues, money issues. Uh, physical issues. All these issues are are it are 
diseases, uncomfortable. We lift up eyesight. Uh, Greg's co-worker, Fred, and I think that's Irene Foster, if, I, if I've got their uh, names written down. Greg's co-worker, and then I, Fred and Irene Foster. I don't think, I think those are two different uh, families. But that the body of Christ may be perfect, duly furnished unto all good works, and bring honor and glory to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the formalities of reading the prayer request is one thing that we have to do. Amen. So it looks like I got Miss Jacqueline here now. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. As we get ready to pray, uh, always, always search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. See if there be, uh, okay, the same one. Thanks, Greg. Um, so that meant Fred and Irene were, the, were his co-workers. Amen. So that uh, to lead me in the paths of righteousness. Amen. That's the way I want to go. And as the Lord leads me, I want to follow him. Amen. And I guess that's, I don't want to give away Sunday sermon, but we're sort of going along with that so far this week. Uh, the Lord's showing me uh, so many different things to share for Sunday. Uh, but it's not just Sunday. So uh, sometimes as the Lord, as through prayer through the week, I'll be working on three or four sermons at the same time. And uh, and I don't know how how we're able to do that. Except the Lord, as he speaks to me, I write it down. Amen. And uh, and he always works things out, don't he, Brother Greg? That uh, when it's time, uh, he gives you the right words to say. Or Miss Doris, when she's teaching, gives her the right words to say. And then he gives me the right words to say to edify. And we'll bear witness and, and almost what they call harmonize. Amen. Harmonize in the gospel of Jesus Christ. So as we go to the Lord in prayer. You know what you stand in need of. So we pray for forgiveness of ourselves to prepare to pray. And that's what we do at church when we get ready to come into, when we enter into the sanctuary. This is the way all of you that are, uh, the ones that are looking, watching now, I know that uh, your testimony is that you're saved. So as you come in, you, you get your spiritual heart, your spiritual mind ready to worship. You start praying, getting the atmosphere ready before it's time to teach. Before it's time to preach, so that when other the other people that don't really prepare themselves the same way, if we have visitors that they come in, they can feel the presence of the Lord. Amen. Glory to His name. Well, let's let's glorify Him once again. Give Him praise. Amen. We honor Him. We glorify You, Lord. Lord, we thank You for the opportunity to call upon Your name. Thank You, Lord, for the for the reading and hearing of Your Word tonight. Thank you, Lord, that you give us guidance on prayer tonight. Thank you, Lord, for seeing the ones of our of our church come in to for to hear the sermon for tonight, to hear an encouraging word, encouraging word here at midweek service, here in the prayer closet. Father God, we lift up all these on our prayer list, all the names that we called out. Lord, many names with many situations and circumstances in their life, Lord. Father God, I lift up and eyes up. We called out their names. Father God, we pray, Father God, first of all, for their spiritual welfare, their spiritual uh, strength, their spiritual guidance in you, Lord. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you would touch their hearts and their minds to have the right attitude, Lord Jesus. Father God, many of us sometimes get stressed and depressed and, and maybe even some get their feelings hurt from time to time. But Lord, I pray, Father, that these are spiritual things Lord, for emotional things, Lord. Even in the motion, Lord, we know that it is a spiritual uh, being. It's a spiritual situation in our life that needs to have guidance as righteousness, peace, and joy, as well as happiness comes from above, Lord. Lord, I pray for these, Lord, on our prayer list. Those that are sick today, Lord. We Those that have been diagnosed with sicknesses, Lord. As, uh, as I'm reminded of Miss, uh, Miss Millie's uh, prayer request of of her sister Ellen, Lord. You know what this is about the blood caught uh, in her body, Lord. I pray, Father, in Jesus' name that you would dissolve this blood clot 
in a way, Lord Jesus, that it would not affect the health of her body, but she would be more healthy and more strong. Lord God, just as the woman that had the issue of blood, Lord Jesus, it don't matter what blood diseases we have, Lord God, that you are the healer of all diseases. And Father God, may your blood cover up all the other blood situations in our life. For we're made clean and made whole by the shedding of your blood. Father God, for we're saved because we've been washed in the blood. And I ask you, Lord, that your blood will cover these on, on our prayer list tonight, Lord. Renew, Father God, the right mind in all of us on this list, Lord. Give us a mind ready and hungry to serve and worship our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. A, a mind to come into God's house to say, I want more of the Lord. Father God, that you would give the people a hungry heart and may me as the pastor, may you give me the word to feed them. Father God, that will be a nourishment to their spirit as well as, Lord, a refreshing, uh, even a refreshing dessert to top it off, Lord. We ask you, Lord, that you would just touch these that have family issues, of uh, the ones that we've prayed for, that you know that they have family issues, Lord. I pray for them, Lord God, that you would help the husband and wife, Lord, to have that respect one toward another, to have that love one toward another. Lord God, may even this, even though we're finished with the month of February, may you continue through this month, Lord, that we can continue to express and experience the love of God, and share that love one with another. Lord, we pray, Father God, that you would use this, uh, use our church to be witnesses. Use our church, Lord, to be help uh, to the neighborhood. Father God, to be a help, Lord, uh, not just financially, but Lord, to be a help through prayer, a help through support of emotional and stressful situations, and in times of stress. Father God, that we'll be willing to share the word of God to encourage somebody to draw someone into a closer walk with our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. May you put a wall of protection around the body of Christ. Lord God, put a wall around our, our church body and our family. Father God, that there be no enemy be able to penetrate, Lord God, and to cause any hurt, harm, or danger. But Lord, I pray, Father God, that you would help each one to, to uh, be surrendered and submitted unto the Holy Spirit of God. And as we do so, Lord, if we do go through the valley of the shadow of death, that we'll not fear any evil because your rod and your staff, they'll comfort us. We'll know that if God is for me, who can be against me? Lord, we know that the devil is like a roaring lion seeking who he can devour, trying to seek and to destroy what the, what the kingdom of God is all about. But Lord, help us, Lord, that we can depend on the name of Jesus Christ that the name of Jesus will be on our lips and in our hearts and in our minds. Lord God, that your word will be written in our hearts and in our minds. That your word will be a lamp into our feet and a light into our path. That Lord God, even when the devil comes against us, we can have the strength to resist the devil. And help us, Lord, to have that accountability one with another. Help us, Lord, to have that passion one toward another and that passion for Jesus Christ. Lord, to have a, a, a passion to, to want to have more of Jesus Christ. Lord God, put your will uh, before us, Lord, that we can follow you and seek you. And as you show us your will, and the scripture teaches us, Lord, if we delight ourselves in you, you'll give us the desires of our heart. Put a desire in our heart to follow and to serve you. Lord, we lift up our young people, Lord God, today, uh, that you would bless all these from from Gene all the way to Alex, all these young people that we've got in between. Father God, you would touch each one. Lord God, that you would give us the words to say at the church as the leadership to guide them, to mentor them, as well as, Lord, to, to lead them into a closer walk with you and a walk with you that will keep them in a relationship with Jesus throughout their life. I pray, Lord, that you would help us to develop the, the body of Christ there at Pleasant Grove. Help me as a pastor to have that passion and compassion, that empathy and sympathy. Lord Jesus, that I can be the leader that you want me to be. Lord God, that I'd be able to minister to uh, my people that are watching now and those that will be at church on Sunday and those that we run into from time to time. Lord, that in all these situations, may you give me and my wife, Lord, the guidance that you want us to have 
And Lord, that we can all show the love that, that they show us and we can show to them. And we can grow up our community there at Siler City. And Father God, help us, Lord, to, to be a, a, a lamp and a light in that city that we, that our church is in. We thank you, Lord. Father God, for all these on our prayer list, once again, may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be upon each one. Lord, may those that are watching tonight and those that may watch later again on YouTube, Father God, may your Holy Spirit fill their room, fill their homes, bless their homes, Lord. Father God, may there be a special anointing and a special closeness that they can feel right now, closer right now than they were 30 minutes ago, than they were an hour ago. Father God, and that may their home be uh, have a, sw a sweet smelling savor of the presence of the Holy Spirit of God. Fill them up. Fill their homes. Protect them, Lord. May each one of us yield our life more and more to you as we learn day by day how you want us to live. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Well, look, God bless you. Uh, I, I pray for you. Keep us uh, keep us lifted up in prayer. And uh, we'll keep on keeping on. Amen. I look forward. You guys stay safe. I heard there's a storm coming up on February. Uh, excuse me, on Friday. Uh, you guys stay safe. If you need anything, make sure you call me. Let me know. And uh, keep the church in prayer. Once again, uh, I want you to be prepared. I, I'm, sometime through the service on Sunday, we're going to gather all the young people up. Uh, we're going to anoint anoint them and anoint our circle. We're going to pray over our young people. Amen. So you think of what you, how you want your young people prayed for. Amen. And, uh, and that's what uh, I feel our church, we've got to pray for our young people. Amen. It's more to it than just uh, uh, preaching and for our older people to get something. Our young people may not get it right now, but I believe, I really believe this, is as we begin to pray for them, and we call them up to the altar. We're going to gather them up there so that they learn how to come forward to bring their petitions unto the Lord. I believe it's so important because when we, if we get stuck on the pew, and, and we can pray from the pew, but if we get stuck on the pew, we'll find ourselves bottling or hiding behind the pew instead of stepping out in faith. And sometimes we don't want to, it's not about being seen of others, but sometimes by you coming to the altar will encourage somebody else that really needs to come to the altar. Amen. They really need to get to that altar and take their petition to the Lord. And if you just come up to pray, if you just say, Lord, I'm just going to come up to the altar and pray. I don't really uh, need a special thing. I'm going to pray for all these others that's in the church. But this coming Sunday, we're going to gather around the altar uh, and we're going to pray over our young people. Amen. So look, God bless you and keep it, keep me in, uh, uh, my wife, Irene, my mother-in-law, my dad, Jeffrey, all of us in prayer. We're going to keep you all in prayer. Uh, I love you. Miss you. We'll take, I look forward to seeing you on Sunday. Amen. God bless you. You have a good night. Bye-bye.